Hello everyone, welcome to the 11th tutorial to beginner's guide on how to Enscape. Let's cover how we can utilize the asset library or tools within your Revit this time. First, start a split window with your BIM software or Revit and Enscape. Now this is optional. You can also turn on the synchronized view by clicking this button over here. There. Notice how when I scroll or zoom in in Revit, it automatically adjusts real-time with the Enscape window as well. Regardless of that, we'll actually only focus in Revit this time. Think of Enscape kind of like a rendered minimap for now. So, click on the tools here, select Asset Library. Depending on your Enscape version and license type, the choices here may differ. Since there's a lot of load, give it some time now we've got categories over here and tags as well over here to choose from. Let's start with vegetation or trees. Where is it? There we go. Simply select one of them. Let's choose something that's higher than a person. You know what? I'm going to choose the hedge I saw earlier, which is this one. Now simply click or select one and it will auto automatically minimize and load itself in the program. Now, depending on your processing and RAM usage, this might take some time, so please be patient and don't randomly click anywhere. Once done, you will see a silhouette over here, a trace of where your asset will be placed upon when you click. So, just click once, but I would like to zoom in. Notice how I zoom in, the real-time synchronized view is paused, but let me click somewhere over here and here. Okay, so to cancel that, simply press escape twice. Now notice how it automatically loads itself into your Enscape window if I move this over here. There it is. Now let's add vehicle next. Same method, you can also press the space bar to change the orientation, but first, Let's look for something quite large. All right, let's pick this bus. Sorry, it's a train. Now, notice a silhouette. I'm going to place it over here, but since it's a lot longer than, than what I'd expect it to be, never mind that. As I said earlier, you can press space bar to change the orientation. And let's place it now over here. Press escape twice to cancel. So just go ahead and close this one over here. There we go. All right, so take note how the asset, which is this one, within Revit looks like compared to the Enscape, regardless of the visual style that we have. If I put it into Warframe, Set it back to realistic. It still kind of looks like a gray clay something. That's because the reason for this is so that it will not cause too much stress on our system. There. All right. So we can actually move it within Revit as well, like so. Okay. So. This asset that we imported is actually just like a normal Revit family. We can also alter and configure its properties and parameter like so. Just select one first. Go here to edit type. There. We can change the height as much as we want if we put it to 5000. But take note of the constraint all the time. There. Or the elevation. Again, take note of its constraints. Well, that was just 100, so I guess that didn't make much difference. Anyway, so going back here, selecting this, and here, let's go to the constraint and change the level to maybe the ceiling, and change this to 0. There. Now, it's a little bit elevated. Also, notice how it automatically updates real-time on your Enscape window as fast as it can. 
Oops, wrong button. Yeah, wrong button. Hmm. Never mind, I'll just drag it. There. It's gone. What happened? Hmm. What did I do? Is it underneath the floor? Wait, I want to solve this, the problem first. I think I know the cause. If I go to section box here, there we go. The reason it was gone because it went inside the constraint of the section box. So anyway, we've got it way over here. And if we try to copy it, now where's that copy button? Since my keyboard shortcuts aren't working, never mind. So okay. There we go. It's not yet updated still, but if I press escape twice, that should automatically update in our Enscape window. There we go. All right, so I guess my CPU is up to 100 degrees now. Okay, so for questions and suggestions, please do comment below. And if you enjoyed or find this tutorial helpful, do support me by liking and subscribing. I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much, guys.